Let's do a thought experiment using a very scientific roll of tape. So now I want you to notice that there is an outside circle and an inside circle. And just to drive the point home, I'll draw as straight as a line as I can in between the two. There you go. There's that. And so now all I'm going to do is roll the roll of tape one full rotation. As you just saw, the roll of tape went one full rotation. But here's the thing. So the bigger circle went one full rotation, but the smaller circle went one full rotation as well. So how is it that the bigger circle with a bigger circumference traveled the same distance as the smaller circle with the smaller circumference. Because, I mean, think about it. The intuition here is that if you have a bigger circle, it can roll a further distance before hitting one full rotation. But the smaller circle would have to do one full rotation and some extra stuff to even reach the same distance as the bigger circle. So why is it that when you do one full rotation, the small circle and the big circle travel the same distance. In order to dig a little deeper, we need to start making some measurements. Here I am measuring the circumference. The circumference is just one entire rotation around the roll of tape. I'm measuring the circumference and not the radius because measuring the radius from an uncertain uh, center makes it very difficult for there to be high accuracy. So by measuring the circumference around the circle, I can just divide by two pi and then find the radius. The circumference of our big circle is about 14.75 inches. So that means that after we divide by 2 pi, our radius is about 2.35 inches. And so if you want to find the radius of our small circle here, all we have to do is subtract our big radius by this black line and we'll find our small circle. The radius here is about 0.75 inches. So if the radius of our big circle is 2.35 and this small distance here is 0 0.75 that means the radius of our small circle is 1.6 now that we have a description of both of our circles mathematically let's actually graph out what happens when we do one full rotation this is the path that the outer circle takes this is the path that the inner circle takes This is both paths drawn together for comparison. As you can see from what we just did, the larger circle travels the same distance as the smaller circle. However, it seems as though the smaller circle travels a more direct path than the larger circle. So if we look back at the, the comparison video of the two paths, the larger circle takes a deeper dive than the smaller circle but then the smaller circle takes a smaller dip and a smaller rise than the larger circle. So I think what's happening here is that, yes, they travel the same distance, but one circle travels a more direct path than the other. 